And I don't know if reincarnation is a thing, but in my next life, I would love to be someone non-confrontational and uncontroversial. God, that sounds nice. The good news is that the people pleaser in me has nearly died because there's clearly no way of winning over everyone. But if you're still around, I am too. And I love you. And I hope you're having a great week. And I missed you. Okay, talk soon. Love you. Bye. Bud Light sales drop 21% in wake of Dylan Mulvaney fiasco. Serious trouble. A staggering sales hit for Bud Light is worsening with each passing week following an ill-fated marketing tie-up. With transgender social media influencer Dylan Mulvaney with the latest weekly figures showing a 21% drop. During the week ended April 22, the most recent industry data available, Bud Light sales plunged 21% versus a year ago, accelerating from a 17% slight a week earlier and an initial weekly drop of 6%, when the controversy kicked off during the first week of April, according to Nielsen IQ and Bump Williams Consulting. Meanwhile, beer volumes the number of cases sold, whether in packs of 12, 18 or 24 cans, dropped an even steeper 26% last week, versus a 21% drop a week earlier and an initial drop of 11%, according to the data. That's an indication that Bud Light's core customers who typically buy their beer in bulk are ditching the brand, beverage expert Bump Williams said in a Tuesday interview. Larger packages of Bud Light are not being purchased the 30-pack suitcases, the 20-packs, the 18-packs, the 12 packs they're all being impacted Williams told the Post. It's going to be very, very hard to reverse the decline. Bud Light remains the best-selling beer in the US, with sales last year topping $4.8 billion. By comparison, the number two brand, Modelo Especial, sold $3.75 billion, while Michelob Ultra generated $3.3 billion in sales according to Williams' Connecticut-based research firm. Nevertheless, the precipitous sales drops of the past few weeks have left its sales year to date down a painful 8%, threatening Bud Light's leading position, the latest sales data show. Unless parent Anheuser-Busch turns things around, then Bud Light is in serious trouble this year according to Williams. I think it runs the risk of losing that number one position at the end of calendar year 2023, De Modelo a special Williams said. The post has sought comment from Anheuser-Busch. Last month, Mulvaney began posting images and videos of herself on social media pitching Bud Light, prompting anger and calls for a boycott. The controversy also prompted Bud Light to place two marketing executives Alyssa Heinersheed, the vice president of marketing, and her boss, Daniel Blake on leave. Williams said Heinersheed, who was hired to lead marketing for Bud Light last year amid slumping sales, tried to tap into the progressive youth demographic. Her big miss was I don't think she understood who the core Bud Light shopper was Williams said. When she came out with her comments, they were deemed as being derogatory, insulting and juvenile Williams said. And the Bud Light drinkers said, enough of that. The company has been trying to win back the hearts and minds of those who were upset by the Mulvaney campaign. Over the weekend, Bud Light released a counterfeit YouTube ad showing young beer drinkers frolicking in the rain at a country music festival. The ad, which premiered during the live airing of the NFL draft last week on ABC and ESPN, shows the youngsters cracking open a can of beer as a hit song by the Zac Brown Band is heard playing in the background. But critics accused the company of pandering, in an attempt to regain consumer trust. Mulvaney's brand deals with Nike, Maybelline and Kate Spade have also triggered backlash. Women's magazine Allure recently put Mulvaney on its annual A-list, prompting calls for a boycott. But light sales tumble 26%, amid sobering Dylan Mulvaney backlash, as competitors see spike in beer purchases. Sales of Bud Light beer are down by over a quarter, year on year, after the disastrous partnership with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney. The beer brand presented Mulvaney with personalized cans showing her face, which she promoted on April 1st. Fans of the beer erupted in fury. A boycott was declared, Kid Rock used Bud Light cans as target practice, and $5 billion was wiped off the value of the brand. Two senior marketing executives have taken leave of absence amid the fiasco. On Sunday, Beer Business Daily reported that the beer's off-premise sales volume, meaning the amount of beer sold outside of restaurants and bars, had fallen by 26.1% from a year earlier in the week ended April 22. Sales were down 21.1% in the prior week, while competitors Coors Light and Miller Light saw consumers turning to their brands as both have had an increase in sales. So far this year, Bud Light volumes are down 8%. The shocking deterioration of Bud Light Blue's market share 
continue to pace through the third week of April, and actually somehow worsened. We've never seen such a dramatic shift in national share in such a short period of time Beer Business Daily wrote on its website. Coors Light's volume was up 13.3% for the same time period and Miller Lite rose 13.6%. Last week's senior executives at parent company Anheuser-Busch held a closed-door meeting with distributors in Washington, D.C., where they laid out future plans and promised to spend heavily on Bud Light to salvage its public image, according to reports. Ben Steinman, editor of Beer Marketers Insights, said that spending on the brand fell off a cliff last year, but Anheuser-Busch leaders are promising to rectify the situation. New York Post reported. On top of the marketing blitz, executives working for Bud Light will also go through a more rigorous screening process, according to one Northeast-based beer distributor who spoke to the New York Post. There will be an improved screening process before any marketing hits the public. Executives will have to go through a more rigorous screening process Bud Light execs said during Zoom meetings this month. Last month, Donald Trump Jr. called for an end to the boycott of Bud Light in a video posted on his Rumble channel. During his message, Trump Jr. emphasized the brewer's conservative credentials and said it was wrong to blame the whole company for the inaction or the stupidity of someone in a marketing campaign that got woke as hell. Trump Jr. said he had researched Anheuser-Busch and saw they mainly donated to Republicans and said his fellow conservatives sometimes had the tendency of shooting first and aiming second. In the video, the former president's son pointed to Anheuser-Busch's support of Republicans including Ohio Senator J.D. Vance and California Representative Kevin McCarthy. Trump Jr. said that the decision to partner with Mulvaney was reportedly made by a low-level marketing employee rather than the senior executives. We looked into the political giving and lobbying history of Anheuser-Busch. And guess what? They actually support Republicans, said Trump Jr. Last cycle their employees and their PAC gave about 60% to Republicans and 40% to Democrats. That's literally almost unheard of in corporate America, where it's really easy to go woke where they do so constantly, where there is a consequence to actually being a conservative. So 60-40 to the conservative side is kind of a big deal. The 45-year-old said he also respected the St. Louis-based beer company's corporate approach. On the lobbying front, we looked into the bills that Anheuser-Busch was working on, he said. You know what they're focused on, guys. They focused on taxes and trade things that actually impact their business. They haven't done any lobbying for like the random pet issues of the day and the nonsense and the BLM crap. I didn't find that they focused on the things that affect their job. The CEO, Brendan Whitworth, is a former Marine and CIA agent who has been registered as a Republican for most of his adult life. Trump Jr. said he disagreed with boycotting a 170-year-old company for one mistake. So here's the deal, he said. Anheuser-Busch totally s the bed with this Dylan Mulvaney thing. I'm not, though, for destroying an American and iconic company for something like this. He added, when I actually look into it, I'm not going to blame the whole company for the inaction or the stupidity of someone in a marketing campaign that got woke as hell. The company itself doesn't participate in the same leftist nonsense as the other big conglomerates. He said he loves going after people when they screw up, but felt the Bud Light boycott had gone too far. His comments echo those of Howard Stern and Joe Rogan, who both argued that it was excessive. I think sometimes we do have the tendency of shooting first and aiming second, not looking into the details, said Trump Jr. He concluded, so they've been put on notice. I'm leaving them alone. I think you should probably do the same if they do it again, they've been warned.